So it appears that right wing influencers such as Tim Poole and Laura Chen and Dave Rubin are now being accused of taking money from Russia. This is a wild story. Uh, I wasn't able to cover this last week because I found out about it later on. And now I'm able to sit down and talk about it as I've looked into more of the details. I want to talk about this and I want to explain like how this is problematic for those of us that do uh, independent media. We're going to get started with this clip here from Joy Reid. Did Tim Pool, Laura Chen, Dave Rubin, to name a few, take payments from Russia. Let's go ahead and get into this clip here. In handy. The indictment notes Company One, which describes itself as a network of heterodox commentators that focus on Western political and cultural issues, the exact same language used by Tenant Media on its website and social media channels, and identifies six commentators as its talent. The indictment doesn't name them, but Tenet Media has six right wing YouTube commentators on its roster. So you can see here uh, Tim Poole, Benny Johnson, Dave Rubin, Taylor Hansen, who doesn't have a picture for some reason, Lauren Southern and Matt Christensen. These are not people I watch. Uh, Dave Rubin at one point was a TYT commentator and then decided it would be more lucrative for him to move over towards right-wing media. That's just the reality. It is what it is. And so he took that path. Tim Pool, if I remember correctly, comes from the Occupy movement. I think that's when he started to get his name on the map. Uh, but these are people that have particularly large platforms. Like they have a large following. I think Tim Pool has millions of viewers same with Dave Rubin, and I think Benny Johnson might also be in that same million category as well. Tim Poole, Benny Johnson, Dave Rubin, Taylor Hansen, Lauren Southern, and Matt Christensen. And you will be forgiven if right now you're asking yourself, who? Just know that some of them are prominent mega celebrities. They adamantly deny involvement in posts on Elon Musk's ex Twitter. Tim Poole said that he and others were deceived and were victims. Dave Rubin claimed he knew absolutely nothing about any of this fraudulent activity. The indictment does suggest the unnamed commentators were unaware that they were being paid by Russian efforts. But a look into the Internet presence of some of these contenters, of some of these creators content shows what Russia was looking for. What else is going on with Ukraine these days? It's not just that we are funding the war. Everyone knows that we're funding a war, which you might argue if you're funding the war, if you're paying for the war, maybe that means you're in the war, but we've never actually gotten authorization for this war. Our leaders, leaders keep telling us that this is the most important thing in town. This is psychotic. Ukraine is the enemy of this country. Ukraine is our enemy being funded by the Democrats. I will stress this again. One of the greatest enemies of our nation right now is Ukraine. Ukraine is the greatest threat to this nation and to the world. We should rescind all funding and financing, pull out all military support, and we should apologize to Russia. Apologize to Russia? Of course, it's not. So as you guys can see here, um, obviously, they're highlighting the clips where they have been critical about the war in Ukraine. But that's not just a right wing thing. People on the left have also some people have been critical on the left about the war in Ukraine. They don't want American dollars going to fund this. I don't want American got dollars going to fund it. We've been sending billions of dollars to Ukraine and we have problems right here at home that need to be addressed and need to be resolved. So notice the clips that they chose to put in there. Again, I'm not a fan of any of these people, Tim Pool, Benny Johnson, Dave Rubin, et cetera. Uh, but I just want to point out some of the propaganda that goes into this as you listen to that clip there from Joy Reid. Now, I do want to get into this article here to give just a little bit of a, a backstory about how this all started. Now, again, apparently these commentators worked for a company called Tenant Media. I, I had never heard of it before. I was not aware of this. Uh, but apparently was created by Laura Chen and I believe her husband. Let's get into a little bit of the details here. Russia secretly warms its way into America's conservative media. And here is a picture of Lauren Chen here. Let's go on. 
So in early 2022, a young couple from Canada, Lauren Chin and Liam Donovan, registered a new company in Tennessee that went on to create a social media outlet called Tenant Media. By November 2023, they had assembled a lineup of major conservative social media stars, including Benny Johnson, Tim Poole, and Dave Rubin, to post original content on Tenet's platform. The site then began posting hundreds of videos trafficking in pointed political commentary, as well as conspiracy theories about election integrity, uh, the pandemic, immigrants and Russia's war with Ukraine that were then promoted across the spectrum of social media from YouTube to TikTok, X, Facebook, Instagram, and Rumble. It was all federal prosecutors now say a covert Russian influence operation. So let me just pause here for just a second and say this. This is why, uh, you know, and creators take their own path, but this is why I am one of those people I've been very hesitant to collaborate on certain platforms. There have been a number that have reached out. If I can't get a backstory, uh, where the money's coming from, who you're associated with, to me, that gives me concern because you really don't know. Like Tim Pool is saying like he didn't know. It's plausible that he did not know he was taking money from Russia, right? But the reality is, As an independent commentator, I've been very careful about what what platform to be on and refusing sponsorships. That's another one where they can get you. You accept a sponsorship because someone is giving you a sponsorship because they like what you're saying. Uh, The moment you go against what they're saying, then they may not want you to have that sponsorship anymore. It happens all the time. There's that. Then there's two, if you don't know where that company is getting their funding from, yeah, I mean, that's that's problematic. So I don't take sponsorships and I'm not on a, they were on tenant media, so I'm not part of tenant media or, or that type of thing. Um, I do work with a ritual uh, network, which they basically manage me. They help me figure out what works well, what doesn't like my thumbnails. They've helped a lot with that and tell me you need to work on those types of things. But that's a very different situation than what is being alleged here. And I keep saying alleged because we still don't know for sure, but it was disturbing to me when I I heard about the story, because I said, if this is true, this is really frustrating because a lot of us that are in independent media that don't want to take any corporate money, that type of thing. We are constantly being accused. (laughs) Those of us who are anti-war, those of us who are on the left, especially like the real left, we are constantly being accused of being like Putin puppets or, you know, Russian propaganda, et cetera. And it's really disturbing because I can't speak for everybody else, but for myself, that is not true. I've never even been to Russia. It's just the reality. But now that this has come out, Now you see they're not just going after people that were on the left. They're also going after people on the right. And this is why when I brought up the case about the Huru three, some people were just like, well, I don't agree with socialism. So it is what it is. It doesn't matter if you agree with socialism. Censorship is a problem across the board. And I told you it would only be a matter of time before it swings in the other direction. So you see the Uhuru three, they're on trial right now, accused of being Russian agents and not registering as a foreign agent. And now you see it has swung in the other direction and you see conservative commentators that are being attacked, that are being accused of taking Russian money. I still don't know if that's true or not, but you see, it doesn't really matter if you're on the right or the left. Censorship is a problem across the board. So the problem that I worry about is the fact that now corporate media pundits like Joy Reid and others can now point and say, aha, we told you those independent media people, they were Putin assets. We told you that they were working with them because of this particular case here with tenant media. Let's continue. This is crazy. It was all federal prosecutors now say a covert Russian influence operation. On Wednesday, the Justice Department accused two Russians of helping orchestrate 
10 million in payments to tenant in a scheme to use those stars. I say use those stars to spread Kremlin friendly messages. Now it could just be that when those clips that you saw where Tim Pool and Dave Rubin were criticizing Ukraine war, it could just be, that's just how they felt genuinely about that particular subject. However, it does not look good if you are taking money from Russia and you had those talking points, now people can just say you were paid to say it. Let's continue. The disclosures reflect the growing sophistication of the Kremlin's longstanding efforts to shape American public opinion and advance Russia's geopolitical goals, which include, according to the American intelligence assessments, the election of former President Donald Trump in November. And don't you guys think it's pretty interesting that this is being revealed now, right after corporate media had announced that they are worried that, again, Russia is trying to interfere into the 2024 presidential election. That was just announced recently. And then you have the trial with the Hoover Three, which was scheduled prior, but still. And now you have this accusation against Tim Pool and others that worked with Lauren Chen's media company. Very interesting folks. Let's go ahead and go forward here. The operation that prosecutors described this week shows a pivot to exploiting already established social media influencers who in this case generated as many as 16 million views on Tenet's YouTube channel alone. Most viewers were presumably unaware as the influencers themselves said they were that Russia was paying for it all. And I just do want to echo that sentiment here just to be very clear. Uh, and I'll show you Tim Pool's response in just a second. They have said that they were not aware that they were being paid by uh, Russia. Influencers already have a level of trust with their audience, said Joe Lacuto, uh, a professor at the University of Texas. So if a piece of information can come through the mouth of an existing influencer, it comes across as more authentic. It goes on to say here, the indictment, which landed like a bombshell in the country's conservative media ecosystem also underscored the growing ideological convergence between Vladimir Putin, Russia, and a significant portion of the Republican party since Mr. Trump's rise to political power. The federal investigation that led to the indictment unsealed on Wednesday is part of a broader government effort first reported in the New York Times to combat Russian disinformation, election interference, and cyber attacks. Administration officials have said the effort could lead to more charges. The indictment detailed the lengths that Russia went to try to make Tenet a player in the country's political discourse. Oh, man. This is, this is wild. Uh, in the, sorry, in the country's political discourse, while uh, obfuscating, obfuscating, sorry, the fact that it was footing the bill, the incl that included transferring at least 9.7 million to Russia through shell companies in countries like Turkey, the UAE, and Meritarius. I'm not familiar with this one. Those payments accounted for 90% of the company's revenue last October and August, the indictment said. Prosecutors have not so far charged Mrs. Chen and Mr. Donovan. It is unclear where they are, and they did not respond to requests for comment. The indictment did note that neither they nor tenant had registered as representative of a foreign government, a requirement of the Foreign Agents Registration Act known as FARA. So here we go again with registering as a foreign agent. So as I said, with the Uhuru trial, now you see this is going to other parts of the political atmosphere. And this is what I've warned people about with the censorship. Now, Tim Poole has commented, and I do want to show some of the things that he said. Let me make sure I bring this in here, right here. So Tim Poole made a statement and he said, um, I have been contacted by the FBI as a potential victim of a crime. The FBI believes I have information relevant 
to an ongoing criminal investigation and have requested a voluntary interview. I will be offering my assistance in this manner. So let's go back here just a second. Pardon me, because I do want to show you something else that Tim Poole said. Because he did give an official statement about this. And this is scary. Like, this is crazy stuff, man. Just scroll down. Um, and it looks like also Ben Shapiro made a statement here as well. Okay. He said here, I remember back when they said I was funded by the CIA, then it was right wingers. Now it's the Russians tomorrow. It will be, uh, I don't know, like Poland or something. And then he did release a statement. I just want to make sure. Yeah. So you can see his, some of his tweets here. I am now pro war. We must fund Israel and Ukraine. That was September 5th. He uh, put that there saying hello to his mom. I don't know why that is. He put a statement here where he said, um, upon reflection, I now understand that Ukraine is our greatest ally as the bread basket of Europe and peace loving people. We cannot allow the fascist Russians to continue their crimes against humanity. We must uh, redouble our efforts and provide an additional 200 billion at once. So you see what's happening. Notice how he's starting to change his rhetoric. Uh, ever since this information was released and he did release a statement here. My statement regarding allegations in the DOJ indictment, should these allegations prove true? I, as well as the other personalities and commentators were deceived and are victims. Um, so first of all, I wouldn't have included the other commentators in your statement. Cause you really don't, cause here's the thing. You, you don't know what they knew. I wouldn't have included them. Um, so there's that. And then he goes on to say, I cannot speak for anyone else at the company as to what they do or to what they are instructed. The culture war podcast was licensed by tenant media. It existed well before any license agreement with tenant, and it will continue to exist after any such agreement expires. The only change with the agreement was that the location of the live broadcast moved to Tenet's YouTube channel. I and TCW never produced any content for Tenet Media. Never at any point did anyone other than I have full editorial control of the show and the contents of the show are often a political. Examples include discussing spirituality, dating, and video games. The show is produced in its entirety by our local team without input from anyone external to the company. TCW is a separate company, not associated with TimCast.com or other properties. It existed solely for the production of the culture war podcast. That being said, we still do not know what is true as these are only allegations. Putin is a scumbag. Russia sucks donkey balls. And to the journalists who wish to jump the gun, create their own narrative or lie about what is currently going on. You can eat my Irish ass. He says there. Uh, he says here corrected because I didn't know this was an official DOJ release. Uh, Alex Cole said here, bro, nervous as fuck right now. Maybe you can ask to share a cell with Steve Bannon. Interesting. So again, those are the comments there from Tim Poole. I don't know, you guys, the fact that they haven't received a comment or a statement from uh, Lauren Chen, at least that New York Times article, they said they haven't received a response from her. That's suspicious to me. But that being said, we shouldn't even be at this type of crossroads, right? Like people should be able to create the content that they want to create. That is of course, within the guidelines of the platform that they are using. And this whole spiel about where the money is coming from, you got payment from another country or whatever. It's sad that that even needs to be a part of the conversation. There are a number of times where Americans have traveled abroad to work in another country, was paid by another country. It seems like to me the problem is only an issue when it's Russia or it's China or it's Iran. 
if I moved to France and I worked for a French company and I was paid by France, this would not be an issue, right? It's just crazy. It's crazy. But at the end of the day, they are saying that they did not know this. They were not aware that the money was coming from Russia, which could be true. If they did know though, I don't, I don't see them saying that they did know if they did know, you know what I mean? So just keep that in mind. But this is, is very concerning. And I think that we need to push back on this, this rhetoric. We need to push back on this idea that you can be paid from other Western companies, countries, but if it's Russia, if it's Iran, if it's China, it's a problem. And I want to reiterate, I don't take money from either, but the reality is when I looked at this and I looked at their Huru story right now, you have three black socialists that are on trial that are also accused of being Russian agents and not registering as a foreign agent. Tim pool, of course, this news just broke, but they are not on trial. They could end up on trial, but if they don't, you have to ask the question, why? I've told you a number of times before, they particularly target black socialists. We saw this happen with the Black Panthers who were pretty much Marxist socialists. We've seen it happen with people like, you know, Malcolm X, they, ta they target like black radicals or what they consider to be radical. So we will have to wait and see if this leads to a trial with Tim Pool, Dave Rubin, Benny Johnson, and Lauren Chen. We'll have to wait and see. If it does not lead to a trial at all, we have to start asking some questions. But I told you the censorship complex, it's coming after everybody, regardless of what political ideology you have. If you're against the status quo, they're going to try to censor you as much as possible.